Hey y'all, welcome back to Spirit of the Outdoors. We got Brody in the back. He's manning the cedar. We can put now a little bit of seed him for the dove. Might have a little cook. Never know. Never know. Depends on if we got any birds. Nah. That's one of the patrols right there. What you got there, Brody? Yeah, well, grab it with both hands up under there and pick up. You got to try harder. You a big old strong boy. Don't tell me that mushroom's going to whoop you. Come on, pull hard up under. Well, let's see if Daddy can help you a little bit. That and they're about ready to go. Oh, y'all. We might have missed out. Yep. We waited too long about this one, y'all. See how it's done brown looking? It ain't white. It's just a little too far gone. Doesn't got burnt. But it was a big old pretty mushroom, wasn't it, Brody Man? I we cause we didn't pick it in time. Who That would have been a nice purple spored puffball. We found it Yeah, we will. Put the lid on it. Okay. I'm not with it now. Alright, you got the switch over there? Yeah. We riding right here. Spreading a little food. Brody's having himself a time. I'm not going to personally describe, technically describe what we're doing, but you can look and put two and two together, sure. Hopefully we have a little dove. I bush hogged right here where the uh, where the pigs had already tore down the corn stalks, so uh, there is there's still corn stalks up.
He keeps. Like, what's wrong with this guy? Look at it. Now it's what we call slanging some seed. Sling it on out there, come on. I had to, to wipe my lens off. Anyway, y'all, we're going to put a little bit this out. Trying to make a little dough for your hand. Have a little fun. Y'all, I get tickled watching these hummingbirds out here fighting. <laughs> Them things will fight tooth and toenail over a little bit of sugar water. And uh, I was thinking about this old fella I knew. He uh, hung up a, well, his youngins, they bought him a bird, one of these hummingbird feeders, and hung it up on his porch. Cause he was an old man, and he uh, didn't have a lot to do. Couldn't do a whole lot. He kind of getting disabled. and. They thought they'd give him some good entertainment to sit out there on the porch and watch him hummingbirds come to that feeder and fill it. They'd fill it up for him. One of the young'uns come up one day and he was sitting on the porch there with a fly swat. Yeah, he said, well, that the fly's getting bad around here. He said, oh no. <laughs> he said, that one hummingbird said he won't let the rest of them drink. <laughs> he he done got so mad at him fighting out there. He couldn't stand it. He had a fly swat. <laughs> He'd run that one off with a fly swat. <laughs> what the rest of them could come drink. <laughs> they said finally he it made him so mad that they had to take a hummingbird feeder down. <laughs> he said he said it worried him to death. Said he was steadily out there whooping at them hummingbirds with a fly swat. <laughs> Oh, Lord, I couldn't help but think about it. But also, I got to looking. Me and my dad was talking uh, yesterday, and uh, <laughs> he told me, he said, I'm fixing to pull these bird houses over him by the shop up. I said, you are? He said, yeah. He said, we can't have no figs and no apples or nothing. And you know, I thought about that and I said, you know, it's your truth. I've got an apple tree back here that I usually just get apples and y'all, I have picked up apples that have been just hauled out from the top down. And it's a lot like welfare. You start feeding these birds and different things and, and help them out and build them a house to live in. And then next thing you know, what little you give them ain't enough. They want everything. And then... They don't want to go look for seed in the ground no more. Now, they want to come eat what you're trying to have. And uh, it, then they take over, and it, it's we, we can't have figs now, and we can't have uh, apples. We can't hardly have any. The blueberries, they have raided them. My elderberries, they have cleaned them up. Oh. Uh, just about any fruit. The plums, man, they, they got, we didn't have a lot of plums this year, which we didn't have a lot of apples this year either for some reason. And the apple tree flowered way past when it normally does and was way past the frost. So the frost and ice didn't get it. Now it may have reset the tree and caused it to flower late. I don't know. But it didn't produce like it did years before. And then the peaches, it got them. We ne I never even had a peach on my peach trees. So, uh, but, you know, they, them birds, they cleaned up what little they was. And welfare's like that with people. You know, people's not much different than animals. And you start helping, and you want to help people. And you want to hand to them. You know, we need to help the needy. And I'm not against helping people, y'all, by no means. But if you help them too much, it ruins them. And then they can't take care of themselves no more. It, you really hurt them more than you're helping them when you start just giving to them. You have to provide people with means of helping themselves. Give them a job. Give them something to do to earn what they 
because it's that's what builds that person and helps that person. If you just start giving them food, you they they eventually get where they can't do nothing at all. And then that next thing you know, they want everything you got, and you can't you can't never give them enough. Then so you can learn a lot of lessons about life by watching it. And I sit here and counted, and there's over twenty seven bird houses that I can count on this property. Just from me sitting right here in this porch and counting what I can see. And that ain't counting the number of gourds that we put up for the Martins. Now, the Martins help us a lot, but we don't feed them. We just give them a place to live. We don't feed them at all. They, they get their own food, so they catch bugs and things. So they help, but it's in how you kind of do things. I just thought I'd drop that little bit of knowledge there with y'all. That's honeybees in there. I just wanted y'all to get a good look at about how tall these pumpkins was already. These things is growing. I may not can grow a watermelon, but I can make a pumpkin grow. Next year, we're gonna put the watermelons down here, ain't we, Brody? We can keep the coons out of them. Oh, we got the honeybees now. I don't know if you can hear them buzzing, but... What'd we make down here? We got a hog trap, but what was we working on yesterday? What did me and you do yesterday on the tractor? Grand calling and deep grand calling. And bush hogging. And we did bush We up corn and fed some chickens. And then baby chickens, and then baby chickens, and then baby chickens. Yeah, we fed them baby chickens. We bush hog a little bit. Yeah, and then... Y'all, we rode down here this morning on the buggy to check out hog traps. Uh, see if we saw a bird or two. Uh, now, you don't really put seed out one day and go hunting birds, looking for birds the next day. But now we've been scattering a little seed along right down this road for about a week or two. So they is about 12 or 14 doves, somewhere in that neighborhood that we've been seeing on a regular basis. So it ain't like we fixing to have no humongous dove shoot down here. We doing this to uh, teach Brody a little bit about making a dove field, putting seed out. The excitement of the coming hunting season, that's more what it's about. Uh, as far as a dove, I told a man when I was at the store buying seed, I said, uh, people talk about how expensive deer meat is. I said, pound for pound, it don't even come close to what dove cost. Y'all, what time you get through disking and bush hogging and putting out seed and buying seed and buying shells and all that. And then weigh the meat you got when you sit and done. <laughs> a dove is an expensive piece of meat. So this is not about, uh, and I see one flying right yonder going to them trees. This is not about uh, hunting and, and, and a cheap means of getting food by no means. It, it don't work that way. Uh, now it can with some things, but doves, I've never found out a way to not here because we don't have naturally harvested crops that we can just go hunt over now people cut hay and but our corn and stuff right where i'm at is is like i did just a little patch to to eat off of now you can go about i uh, 
40, 50 miles north of here and start getting into some delta areas when you get up past Macon and then from there on up, you start hitting cornfields. And, uh, and it's pretty much crops and corn from there to the South Dakota. So we just right out of the out of the south, southern part of natural farming area, but that's all right. We uh we like it here, and me and Brody's working on a dove field, and we hope that we get to come down here. For me, y'all, I enjoy more getting up, and coming down here in the mornings, and seeing if I see a few doves. As far as me shooting it, dove, I'll be honest, y'all, I can't hit them that good. I, I'm better with a rifle than I am a shotgun or a handgun. Now, I hit probably better with a handgun than I do a shotgun. So, But we're going to work on that this year. We're going to probably get the skeet thrower out if we can afford shells and skeet. Now, I, we, you know, that stuff's getting hard to, hard to pay for now. But anyway, we wanted to show y'all a little bit about making a dove field and come down here and look around. And uh, I, I wanted to show y'all the the, we cleaned up just a little bit, but I didn't bush hog all of my corn. I wanted to leave that. We're hoping the pigs come back in here, but y'all, since we put the trout, we ain't seen a track nowhere, and that's going to be the story of it. So we're going to leave it a week or so, and uh, probably about a, about a week, see if we can get the pigs to come back up here. If not, Stan may have to take his trap somewhere else. So we're just letting y'all know a little bit about what's going on. Brody, he is standing right here watching. You going to say anything to the camera there, Brody, man? What you want to say? Tell them something. He's got to thank his story up. We went fishing. When did we go fishing? Um, the night. We didn't go at night night. No. We didn't go fishing at night. I don't remember that. Okay. Tell them about this dove field. Yeah. Um, we're at dove field. You don't know much about it? Was it fun riding that tractor? Yeah. Tell them about riding on that tractor. It was fun riding on that tractor. Well, come over here where they can see you. He keeps squirming around what we call it. Anyway, thank y'all for watching Spirit of the Outdoors. We'll see y'all next time. Remember the best way to do see things. See y'all next time. Do what? See y'all next time. He said see y'all next time. Remember the best way to do things is the way you like to do it. And you like to do it. We'll see y'all.